All right, hello again. This is just a quick look at the Nikon Z6 and Z7 firmware 3.0, which was released today, um, February 18th, 2020. So this added things like uh, animal eye AF and face detect autofocus for uh, cats and dogs. And it changed the way that you do autofocus tracking, the way you start and stop it, and um, a few things like that. So I just mostly wanted to go over the autofocus tracking and uh, how you initiate that. I'm recording this with my Nikon Z6, just basically pointed at my Z7. Um, so I'm gonna use this little troll here as an example. It's a Sony troll, by the way. Um, so the, the way that you had to do the focus tracking before was you'd have to go into, and you still need to do this, you need to be in, as far as the um, AF area mode, you have to be in auto area AF, and then course you need to be in AFC so continuous autofocus so the way you had to do it before was you'd press the OK button see where it says press OK so press OK to get the the tracking box up now let me stop for a second and um, go back so in this mode this is auto area AF and there's a couple of things that you can do in this mode first of all it's just normal auto area so it'll pick anything that's that's in um, in the frame and just focus on it without really you having any control over it. It's just going to pick whatever it wants, what it thinks should be in focus. But this is also in the mode that you have to be in for the autofocus tracking. And that's a little bit different than the Sony with the, with the real-time tracking. I think they have a separate um, area mode. Basically they have um, sort of like Nikon's auto area mode and then they have a separate mode where you go and it's kind of a free-for-all for the uh, autofocus where it can use the face and eye detect, it can use object tracking, object tracking, things like that. But Nikon's got it all, those two things combined in this auto, auto area mode. So if you're in that and you're not doing anything else, you don't press the OK button and you just press the um, shutter half shut, the shutter button halfway down if you have your focus on the shutter button still, or you could use the AF on button and uh, focus on something. But the way you had to do it before to get into the tracking, you'd have to press the OK button, and now you get the box. Now, now it's ready to start tracking, and um, so now you just press the camera, you know, the um, shutter button halfway down, and you see it turn yellow. Now it's actually tracking, and um, but you can also use the rear AF on. The thing about this now is, before it would not return to the center and go white again, where it's just ready it would just keep continuing to try to track that subject. Now if you press AF on, move it around, let go of it, it goes right back to the center and you're ready again. And if you wanted to get out of that, you just press the uh, minus button down there, get out of it, and now you're back in auto area mode. So go back into tracking, now you got the box again, it's white, it's ready, and then you just press and hold shutter halfway down, take a picture, press and hold shutter halfway down, You know, again it's yellow, as soon as you let go of it, this is the improvement, and uh, let go, it goes right back to the center, and it's ready to start tracking again, so you can just change subjects really, subjects really quickly. Uh, the other thing they did was they let you assign, instead of using the OK button to start and stop, and um, get the little tracking box open, you can use one of the function buttons in the, in the front. I programmed F1, FN1, the one on the front uh, top by the lens, I programmed that as the, um, temporarily, I program of that as the, uh, well, hold on, this will go in the menu and see what it says. So under custom settings menu, F for controls, uh, custom control assignment, F2, and it's called uh, subject tracking. So that's what I have for that button. So uh, instead of having to press the OK button in the back now and use the little minus button back there, you just press it, press it once, and now it's ready for tracking. Again, you press and hold shutter button or AF on, it'll track. And then uh, you can press the button again in the front, so that makes it really quick. You don't have to do the OK and then the little minus button to get out of it. So just press it once, the function button in the front, turn it on, it's ready. Track, let go, goes back to the middle. And to turn it off again, you do that. Uh, but I'm pretty much always in AFS and uh, actually, I'm almost always in AFS and um, single point. I don't normally use anything, you know, as far as tracking and continuous AF other than 
um, video and so on. But that's basically the gist of it and how you would um, activate it and what the improvement is. It is a big improvement you know, as far as not having to press the OK button and press it again to kind of stop it from tracking. Uh, the way it is now, it's, it's much less cumbersome and pretty quick. The only thing that's a little bit different about it still, if you want to kind of compare that to Sony, is Sony's got like a, like I said, they have another AF um, area mode that that's separate and you can do the real-time tracking and all that kind of stuff from there but the um, Nikon they use auto area AF and again AFC so in that auto area AF uh, if you don't start the tracking or bring up the tracking box you're just kind of focusing on anything and um, if you bring up the tracking box now it's ready to track so you're, you're basically doing two things there. Oh the other thing about uh, this tracking mode if you're if you're if you don't have the white box open for um, as far as face and eye detect AF, whether it's for cats or people or whatever, if you're just in AF area, the auto area here without the tracking box up, it'll track faces and eyes. But as soon as you bring up the tracking box and start tracking something, or if it's just up, it's not going to detect eyes and faces. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. It kind of separates those things. So the, the little white box up just means, you know, it's ready to do subject tracking and um, if, with the box not up, now it's, you can do face and eye detect and so on. So that's pretty much the overview for that right now. Um, the other thing I noticed when the um, testing is on one of the cats is the, uh, the um, I can't do it right now, but the little box that goes around the eye when you're doing the, um, the eye detect AF, it seems to be smaller. So with, you know, with the this firmware update, so I assume that means it's they've kind of refined that, made it a little more precise, and it, it's really quick, and it seems to be very accurate so far. I haven't really had a lot of time to fool around with it, and I honestly don't use it that much. But um, that's something else to look for. I think the uh, <clears throat> sorry if I'm sounding winding here, but winded, but uh, been coughing all day. I don't know what's going on at the officers. A lot of dust for some construction going on, but anyway. So that's that's kind of what's going on right now with the improvements for the Nikon Z6 and Z7 uh, autofocus tracking. I just wanted to kind of explain how that works as far as how to get into it and you know having that button set up on the front if you want to set it that way and then what the improvement is. It, it is make, make it a lot quicker when you have it set this way if you use tracking. I don't really use the tracking. I just like I said, I'm always in AFS and uh, single point, but um, this does make it more convenient if I ever do need to use it. All right, well, thanks for watching.